Hey, everybody. Welcome back to The Real with Rachel D and BJ, our online podcast and YouTube or whatever. Okay, so we've been talking about how we've been quarantined or is it really quarantine, BJ? What is it? I I mean, I don't... I, I'm, in a sense, because we have something, right? Right. So we we put ourselves under self. No, no. You know what it's called? What did the governor call it? We're shelter in place. Yeah. I guess so, that's what. Basically, my black ass is at home and I ain't going nowhere. That's what it is. It has been like that for weeks. Jesus. Mm-hmm. Well, we decided, like everybody else, let's talk about Miss Rona because she taken over. So, uh, she is, you know, I mean, I'm talking about she came through with a vengeance. She did. She mad at somebody who don't pissed off Mother Earth because something has is con- and terribly wrong. I think that person's name is Trump, but you never know. <laughs> Just saying. All right. So instead of giving updates about um, the coronavirus, something that you can find on every news outlet, we want to just talk a little bit about the people who who seem to not know what social distancing is and is getting in trouble for it. Right. So, okay. So let's start here. I mean, we all love to worship everyone. I respect everyone's religion, but at the same time, if you know that there is a deadly pandemic going around, taking out everyone and they want everyone to try to flatten the curve. Tell me why this pastor in Houston had not one, but two huge services at a mega church. Now the difference between a regular church and a mega church is is not even a hundred a hundred at a regular church is pretty decent old school church but at a mega church that's the difference between a hundred and thousands of people within the same space within the same place of worship this guy and um he knew well i'm not not houston uh, apologies florida he knew that they had just put that sanction in where they only want essential businesses open and for churches to gather online he had two services and he was looking for help I mean, he was praying hard because they came and arrested his ass right after service took him right on to the jail good like i saw a video and he was like one dude was in the background speaking in tongues and he was like he's gonna let the lord take the coronavirus and it's like listen i'm all about faith i really am but that's not how any of this works no okay and you and possibly put so many people's lives at risk. You probably had no measure to even like test them or check their temperature. You just let these people in because right. some of these pastors think that they're above everything. And it's insane. It, and it's crazy because he put hundreds, that, like I said, thousands of people's lives at risk. And then he, of course, he bonded out. It was only a five hundred dollar bond, but for what? Because with worship, with with um, praise and faith, comes common sense. It does. Common sense says, "Hey, you we log online, and if you're too old and don't know how to log online, it's okay. Just pray. I don't have to be there. You don't have to be in my face to to worship." But no, he he wanted it. He wanted that crowd. He wanted to look out at the crowd and he wanted them to look at him. And he got what he deserved. He got arrested. Exactly. And I understand a lot of pastors and and restaurant owners and people whose business and monies are based off of physical people being there are worried. We understand that. And, you know, some, some people just aren't prepared for this. Some people don't have a fund to recover from this. And we understand that, but you have to trust that everything will be okay. Especially if you are a church, you're supposed to be the word, like the faith is supposed to be within that building it. So I feel like that pastor was not really caring about the people or the faith. I think it was just him trying to be the big man on campus. Exactly. And he got shut down. Now he know how those people who be selling bootleg (laughs) <laughs> how they feel because even though he was having service he was still at that moment breaking the law and they treated him as such well speaking of breaking a law and should have gotten her jaw broken for this did you hear about this woman who in philadelphia was playing this alleged twisted prank by purposely coughing on over thirty five thousand dollars worth of food in the grocery store Ooh, yeah i heard about that yeah Oh my God! So of course, disgusting. I don't even understand. Out. How is that funny? 
Her, and listen, the crazy thing, her name is Margaret Chico, I think, and she's 35 years old, which is extra disappointing because as much as millennials have sat there and been fighting people online about what's a millennial and stop blaming us for stupid stuff, here is this millennial doing something I would expect the 18 year old to find funny. Hell no, she's 35 for real. She's 35. Wow. Just, See, she bringing us, man, she making us look bad. We trying to blame all this craziness on Generation Z. And here she is coughing. I'm talking about, oh, wow, I did not know she was a grown, grown woman. She a grown ass woman. I'm thinking she had to be 19, 20. No, 35 years old. And let me tell you, um, she's being charged with making threats. Well, what she did is she coughed and spit on the food and then was telling everybody that she was sick. Oh. Now, even if there was not a coronavirus, coughing and spitting on food is freaking disgusting. What are you thinking? And not to make this a race, a racial thing, but you could tell she wasn't in the black area because how she managed to get out of the, the grocery store unscathed physically oh Let's me know what part of town she was on. Exactly. You're not going to spit. First of all, it's hard to come by some food. And if I have to fight coronavirus to get to the grocery store to finally get some food, and I see this heifer standing over there coughing and spitting on it, I'm going upside her head either with some bread, some oranges, a banana, whatever they have in that section of produce that's readily available. She going to get it. And they allowed her to walk out. No, 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 ma'am. I no, know. and I think from what I heard, her bond was like fifty, like fifty thousand dollars to get out. Mm -hmm. That's thirty five thousand dollars worth of food ruined. This is for people who had to struggle to get there. We don't even know their situation, but for games, for giggles, you ruin it. Oh no, she should still be in jail as far as I'm concerned. That's I ridiculous. Agree. Well, another person who actually, I don't know if they went to jail, but um, had a run-in with the law was a family in Los Angeles who decided, you know what, let's throw a one-year-old's birthday party and have about 35 people over at the house. Yes. 30 to 40 people at the house. Guys, what does social distancing mean to you? There are people who don't want to die. People are dying. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't understand it. And so, you know, because listen, it's disappointing. My baby will turn one in May. I've already bought a whole bunch of Mickey Mouse Clubhouse decorations. I've already put a deposit down for a story timer and a face painter. And I've come to the conclusion that I'm going to lose my money. And it's fine. I'd rather him be at home. We could smash the cake, me, him, and his daddy, and call it a day. Like, y'all have, have to learn some restraint. That's true. Or, no, go ahead. You're putting, they're putting people at risk because at some point, it's not just about your your baby's party. It's about what you want. Exactly. And that's the thing. There's still no matter. You can always make the experience special by what you do. But when you put other people's lives at risk, who ain't got shit to do with you or your child, that's when it becomes selfish and that's when it becomes a problem. Exactly. So these people, let me see if they have their names, but according to a huge squadron of police officers descending upon the Hyde Park area in Los Angeles on Saturday evening to break up a one year old birthday party. Um, it was up to 32 police officers that had to come to break it up, which I think is amazing. Well, I think it's actually a bad decision too, because um, that's a lot of people. I mean, social distancing police officers, y'all got to do that too. Mm -hmm. But they brandished batons and even beanbag guns to help force the furious party go goers to, dis to disperse. And I don't even think that that should even have to happen. I mean, you know what you're doing wrong. So and it's a one-year-old party. It's not like it's three-year-olds out there getting milk drunk in the street. These are grown-ass people at a one-year-old's party, which leads me to believe it really wasn't about the child to begin with to have all those damn grown-ups there. I definitely don't think so. I think that people are having a hard time social distancing. And guys, I get it. Like, I work from home, so being at home is not too crazy for me. But it is different. Like, you're stuck at home. And and thankfully, I have, like, a backyard or somewhere I can go outside and chill privately. Some people do not have that. Some yeah. people need the interaction. So we get it. But <laughs> you know when people are dying of coronavirus, it's not like you can go and have, it's like a scene from Big Mama where you can give your last respects to your loved ones. They're trapped in that hospital until they die. You cannot yeah. see them. They cannot see you. Do you want that for yourself, for your child, for your family or others? You have to think like that. 
So, right. you know, it's I think not... the things are going to crack down even more. Is and it's common sense, and it all boils down to thinking about uh, people other than yourself. True enough, you might think, "Oh, well, I'm not getting it. If I get it, I'm not afraid." That's good for you, but don't think for me. You know, you have to think about other people as well. People who might be around you who might always be affected by this. Today, oh, I'm not certain it was today. I just saw it today on social media. I saw Samuel Jackson reading a book called "Stay the Fuck Home." <laughs> <laughs> and it was and I agreed to everything he said and he's you know his his I, he probably could fit my house in the back of one of his shoe boxes but he's even telling people the purpose of social distancing stay home people have things to do we have plans the longer people stay out and it keeps growing and spreading the harder it's going to be to curve and the harder it's going to be to to recover from it and it's going to spread all the way out through the summer march has already lasted 800 days i, I mean it's finally april 1st but it took 800 days to get here I'm ready for this to be gone. I'm ready for things to get back to normal or to try to repair. Some people have to repair mentally. We have to repair financially, but it's not going to happen as long as people stay out doing what they know they're not supposed to be doing. Exactly. And, you know, one, Samuel Jackson is in his 70s. Mm -hmm. So he's one of them, like the medium age of people dying is 71. So it's like, listen, Thank you. Praise the Lord that your one-year-old made it to one. I get it. A lot of infants don't, you know, so that's mm-hmm. something to celebrate. I remember telling my aunt that she's like, what's the point of a one-year-old birthday? I'm like, shoot, with SIDS and everything, like it's a, it's a blessing to get there. But there are people who are older and they want to live to be old, much older. And right. you have to learn to, you know, think about other people, like them going down to Florida and partying on the beach. And it's like half of them now got the coronavirus because of that. And they looking crazy tomorrow. I don't understand how. Yes, because you took your silly ass down there with a bunch of other people, elbow to elbow, breathing in each other's face. Now you came back coughing and you looking scared. But you know what? You didn't have to do all that if you had stayed here. The beach is always going to be there. This virus is not. So let it do its thing. Get out of the way. And then we can go. That's what I'm saying. Life is, is going to, outside of these doors, things are still going to be there. Things are still going to happen. But the thing is, if you keep messing around with this virus, spreading it, it's not guaranteed that you will be there to experience it. So just stay inside. Stay indoors. Work, you know, work it out. It's going to be over soon. The more people pay attention, the quicker all of this will be over with. Exactly. And one more thing before we go, um, I was just watching a clip on YouTube about the people who are stranded on the cruise ship vessels. And I don't know if they're still <laughs> on. And I'm not saying that I don't feel bad for them, but it depends on when you decided to get on that cruise to determine whether or not I feel bad for you. Okay. So let's be honest. So let's look at this. Okay. So we're adults. <clears throat> They don't allow toddlers to purchase tickets to get on cruise ships. So we have to assume the people that are stuck or stranded are adults. They, Unless they signed up for some kind of super 60-day deal, we knew about coronavirus back, I want to say, end of February. It was word going around about it. We damn sure knew about it in March. Middle of March, we, you're already seeing people being quarantined. What on God's green earth would possess any common sense having person to go on a cruise ship right around now. Who wants to go on a cruise in the middle of a pandemic? Girl, I I have a cousin <laughs> that does. And um, fortunately, they canceled her trip because I believe in my heart and spirit that she would have went if they didn't. Listen, Girl, you- I, I get it. Uh-huh. I have a trip for Europe booked in, in, at the, in fall. And I was so excited because I'm like, it's really like the first time I could afford something like this. And I'm going to take a day. We're going to go to Paris. We're going to go to Disney World, Paris, all these plans. Mm -hmm. And it it doesn't work out. It doesn't work out. I'd rather have my life. I'd rather not be stranded on the cruise ship. Like, you remember when I was, um, when I had my honeymoon? Yeah, you got stranded. I did. I got stranded you had to out. Go to what, Mexico, I think, for a few extra days? I did. And like the cruise <laughs> was like, it was, the, the whole thing was supposed to be seven days. I ended up staying out and see it for 11 days. And let me tell you yeah. how over it I was by day eight. Like, <laughs> and I had a balcony and everything. There's some people who are in the interior, which don't even have a window. 
Yeah. And it's like, you know, I can't imagine being stuck out there. I hear that they only allow you out of your room for one hour a day to get some fresh air. What? In the Alcatraz sound and stuff? See, and yeah. that's the thing, but I'm not trying to even be funny. Those are the things you have to think about when you get a cruise during a pandemic. I would expect nothing less. Exactly. I would absolutely expect nothing less. That's like going to a buffet during a famine and there's no food and you only getting rice and you're looking for what, what, well, I expect it more. Yes. Yes. I would too. But you can't, when there is an actual, a famine is when there's no food. A pandemic is when there's a disease going around and it's affecting everyone in the freaking world. You can't, I mean, you have to expect things are not going to be the way you want them to be. It will, I would much rather stay at home, get my refund or keep my life and just do it again when I can experience it. I'm not going to make horrible memories on purpose just because I can save $2. What kind of cheap ass thing is that? I'd rather just wait. Just wait. It's going to be there. Boats are still going to be there. The water is still going to be there. Just wait till you can get the full experience because the thing about a cruise, the part about it is being out of the room, cruising the deck, putting on some cool, cute ass clothes, going to the casinos, checking out the shows, going to the buffet like three, four, five, six, nine, twelve times. You know, you can't do that when you're quarantined to a room on a boat with no windows. Exactly. Womp, womp. I know. And like I I I feel for some of them because I mean people are dying on the ship, but at the same time, guys, like you have to make smart decisions. Like this isn't a vacation, is it? Now your ass will probably never want to go on a cruise again because of what this has done to you. So people sit home and relax. It'll be there. Yeah, it's and that's the thing. Just use I saw someone on social media said a quote that we're suffering two pandemics, coronavirus and stupidity. And I could mm-hmm. not agree more. And, and that's it's just common sense. And it's not being rude. It's not taking away from people who are actually suffering or, you know, sad about a loved one's death. It's common sense. If you were touched personally by the coronavirus, then this message isn't for you. If you haven't been and you're one of the assholes running around oh, coughing on products, buying cheap ass cruise tickets, stay at home. Watch you some National Geographic and chill till April 30th. Jeez. Exactly. These people, they'll never learn. Well, they'll learn today, in the words of Kevin Hart. Okay. They're going to learn today. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for listening to the Real with Ricky D and BJ podcast YouTube show. I don't know. We'll get this title together one day. But um, make sure you like and subscribe. And please, you know, let us know what you think in the comment section. And we'll be back soon with more uh, content. And we'll check out later. Bye.